guys, this is Charity from Scrap Fair Knits. I'm having some really bright light today. Um, it's actually a beautiful sunny day after two days of terrible windstorms and having zero power in my home. Um, if you can hear the washing machine, actually it's the dishwasher. If you can hear the dishwasher, I apologize. Um, yeah, I look rough too. I'm so sorry. Um, Oh well, I'm not going to be vain today. I just want to get a podcast out. I was really hopeful that I would be finished with this beautiful sweater that I am working on. This is my pavement sweater by Vera Val Mackey. As you can see, it's mostly finished. Um, I'm still working on the bottom garter detail. It's got a garter detail at the bottom of the sweater and then um, the bottom of the sleeves, which I haven't done yet. Um, but work has been really busy lately, so I've gotten very, very little knitting time this week. So, sadly, it's not finished, but I think it looks beautiful. Let me see if I can make it so there's no weird yarn tails. I think it looks really nice. Looks like there's some weird... Oh, there, there we go. And it's not as... Um, I mean, it's plenty big enough to go around me. I did cut out some of the... What is it called? Some of the ease. I only made it with, I think, two inches of negative ease based on my swatch. So, crossing my fingers that that turns out right. Um, but it's been a beautiful knit. It's actually come along quite quickly. I didn't start it until the 15th of February, and today is March the... Today is March the 4th. It's Sunday, March the 4th. I was like, oh, 3rd or 4th, but... Um, so I'm very happy about that. I have gotten two rounds on it this morning, so I feel very excited about it. Um, I have plans to make this sweater, which is by Andy Satterland, next. This is a publication, Quiet Days. I got this from Knit Picks. And I have some yarn in my stash that I bought for a different sweater that doesn't look like it's thick enough for the pattern that the sweater I bought calls for. It's Cascade 220, but it's a sport weight. And this sweater, I can't remember what weight it calls for. I think it calls for a bigger... It either calls for sport or worsted. Wow, you would think I would be able to. Here it is. Yeah, it calls for worsted, but I think it'll be fine in the sport weight, and I might even hold um, sport, the sport weight double because I think I have plenty. But I ordered some Knit Picks sport weight in various colors, which when I make a decision about the color work portion, I will tell you what I use. But I have cream for the background color, and then I got an assortment of reds and pinks and some greens to see what I like. I didn't get any yellow because I have some yellow yarn in my stash that I will have to hold doubled, but I really think this is going to be a great addition to my spring wardrobe. I do plan to make it a little longer because this is a short sweater and I looked through project notes on Ravelry and several people uh, that look like they're in more of the, you know, large to extra large size category, which is where I am. Looks like they made theirs longer too and it didn't take that much more yarn, so... I'm very excited uh, to knit this. So I'm very anxious to get this finished so I can wear it before it gets too hot and then get my nosegay finished. And then I bought some fun things that I want to share with you. Otherwise, I've, I've been super monogamous and I'm very excited to start uh, Spicy's, what is it? The Hands That Make Mr. Rogers Sweater Cow because, oh my gosh y'all, Mr. Rogers was such such an important person in my childhood. Um, but anyway, what I got, I got some Fiber Nymph Dye Works. She came out with some like classic board game colors. This is called uh, Likely Suspects and it's the colors of, the, I'm gonna drop it now, sorry. It's the colors of the characters in Clue. Classic Clue, like Miss Peacock, Mr. Green, Miss Scarlet, Professor Plum. My husband's like, there's no Professor Plum. I'm like, look, there's Plum right there, you guys. Colonel Mustard. I'm not gonna, I think I left some people out. But anyway, and this one, this is actually my favorite um, colorway that she did for the classic board games. 
This is called That's Not Even a Word, which actually makes me think of friends. But this is the this colors of the Scrabble board, you guys. Look at it. Looks so good. I got this one on her Traveler base because her bounce base sold out before I could get there to purchase, but I was super excited to get it. And this Traveler base reminds me of the Lollipop Yarn. It's not Bigfoot. This is so embarrassing. Beefcake. It's the Beefcake base from Lollipop. So I think I really like it. I've enjoyed knitting socks in the Beefcake base. And since I've discovered that I need to start knitting my socks on one for the thinner um, weights of yarn, I can use my size one and a half or size two needles on this, which is what I have way more of anyway. And I can't decide right now. I don't think this is going to be socks. Because although my husband loves Scrabble and I really need to make him some socks, I have a really good friend who also likes Scrabble and she's still in Tennessee. And I was thinking about just making um, a scarf with little like toe ends. I was going to basically make a sock tube with two toes and put either pom-poms or tassels on the end so she could just loop it around her neck because she gets, you know, she gets hot. Um, but anyway, so that's Fiber Knit Dye Works in the That's Not Even a Word and Likely Suspects, which I think is such a clever name. I'm going to hold that right side up so you can see. Fiber Nymph Dye Works. And if you guys don't watch Lisa's podcast, she is amazing and I just love her. And I'm hoping to meet her at the Homespun, oh, homespun Yarn event. You know what? The events that I'm planning to attend will be, I think it's the Homespun Yarn Party. That's what it is in Maryland. It's March 18th. It's Sunday, March 18th. And because it's on Sunday, looks like I can go. I have not yet picked out my socks for my Desert Vista Dye Works socks this month. I have it narrowed down to either my Lisa Frank socks, which I do want to knit, but that would be another pair of socks for me. The Wonder Woman socks, the Wonder Woman yarn that I got that I have wound because I have tried to make a sock out of them before, but I pulled it all out um, because there's a particular sock pattern that I want to knit and it's in a book upstairs. So um, I will talk about that when I decide which socks I'm gonna make, but it's a, a, a pattern that's designed, I think it's by General Hog Buffer and it's for self-striping yarn, but it makes little sine waves. It's not sine waves. Makes like a chevroni, pattern which to me looks like little w's and i thought that would be terribly clever to do with my wonder woman sock yarn so we'll see how that works out we'll see if i can figure it out because it's like um it's the cast on where you crochet cast on some stitches and then you so you can graft it together and i the only time i've ever tried it i think is when i did this tried this particular sock pattern last year and I wasn't quite wasn't quite in a good place to do a different sock pattern like that and um, so I'm gonna try it again this year and I'm sure it's gonna work out much better um, I think this is I did not say okay so I got the likely suspects in her bounce base which is fingering and then this is the traveler base which is a sport weight I'm gonna show you the difference because apart, they look pretty similar, but when you look at them next to each other, there you go, where's the camera? You can see, I'm sorry you guys. If you look at them right next to each other, you can see the difference, and I think that's pretty cool. I don't know if you can tell on camera. But looking at them here, side by side, there's a significant difference in the size of the strand of the yarn. Her pounce base is an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend, and her Traveler base is a lovely 80-20. So I really think I'm gonna love knitting this up, and I can't wait to meet Lisa in person. Uh, other events I will be attending, I have ticket for myself to go to Needles Up, because I go to yarn events by myself sometimes, you guys, and I've always had a good time. I've never had a bad time. I try to talk to people. It's a little scary, but I try to introduce myself to new people in hopes of making new super cool yarny friends. I look like I have a swelling right there. I didn't sleep. 
enough last night, so maybe it's just that. Like I said, we haven't had electricity for a couple of days. There's been some bad storms go through the Northeast, and they hit the Alexandria, Virginia area, and the other parts of Virginia pretty hard, so we were without power at our home for two days. We had some wonderful friends that opened up their home to us, and it was lovely to stay with them because they're they're super good friends anyway, and I've been trying to catch up on my sweater since we've been not home and work's been really busy because I did sometimes I have a lot of knitting time while I'm waiting like if I'm waiting on the phone or waiting on the computer to do something I'll just pick this up I keep it with me um, I have alternated skeins row by row since the third round up here so this is I, I didn't even tell you you guys I'm sorry I'm so excited and we're, my stepson is coming over shortly and I, I am so excited he's coming to visit, so I wanted to get this finished and up. I'm so sorry. It's kind of disjointed today. But anyway, this is Lola Did It in the Fire and Ice colorway. And I am knitting the Pavement Sweater by Vera Valimaki. I didn't have any trouble at all alternating skeins until I got to the short rows. But, and I kept knitting a hole where I was starting, where I was changing the yarns for the short rows and so finally after pulling it out I think the fourth time because you know if at first you don't succeed try and try again is my motto um, and then sometimes you just don't get it so what I did was I just stopped trying to do something I was having so much trouble with and I stopped alternating skeins for the short rows and I can't tell I can hold this up for you about where the short row started to do, and I'm sorry, it's on a really, my needle cord is way too small, but I stopped somewhere in this neighborhood, and I think it still looks fabulous. Sorry I'm watching myself, you guys. For some reason, it's hard not to, and the light's so bright, it's kind of crazy. I'm trying to sit sideways so you can see me, otherwise there's a weird shadowing. I don't have any makeup on either, but... I'm just hoping you'll love me and forgive me. Um, but I really want to talk to you guys. I know this is like the second in a string of shorter podcasts, but I've been really monogamous and really excited about what I'm working on and just wanting to share it with you. I do have um, some Lola Did It in the Time After Time colorway. I've ordered a couple of times because I couldn't get enough the first update to have a sweaters quantity and I actually found a sweater that I like that I might still make but I needed one more skein and because I knew they were coming from different dye lots I ordered two skeins so that I can alternate um you know with with each dye lot equally so that they'll look good because these were these skeins were a Christmas present from my other stepson the one who's not coming to visit today and I wanted to make sure the sweater looked really nice and he didn't feel bad because, I mean, I think they were all done in the same dye lot. But I would hate to have knit something and it have weird pooling and him notice it and go, why does it do that? Is that because of what I bought? Because he's never bought yarn before and he bought it for me for Christmas. And it was just, this is the um, Lola's favorite base, which is a cashmere base. So it was really quite a lovely Christmas present and... He's really been on me like, just finish whatever you're working on, cast on that sweater, just stop whatever you're doing. So when I, um, I made this my Olympic knitting and I, I did miss out, but I did do complete two events in whips dancing. And if I hadn't done my whips dancing first, I definitely would have finished the sweater for the Olympics, but I really needed stuff off my needles. I wanted to finish my DVD socks because so far, two months in, just two months in and I'm on it, you guys, so far. I've done two months in a row of the fourth annual Desert Vista Dye Works Monthly Sock Club, and I've loved it. I've knit socks, a pair of gift, gift socks, and a pair of socks for myself. And that's kind of my problem. I can't decide if I want to knit a pair for myself this month or knit another gift pair. I have a colorway that would be perfect for my mom for her birthday, but I don't know if she'd wear them. She doesn't wear a lot of stripy socks. She wears a lot of solid color socks. And I, know, I cannot imagine knitting a solid color pair of socks. I mean, I could put heel, heels and toes on, but 
I don't know. I really just want to knit all the things right now and it's hard to, to focus. And I also have some yarn upstairs that I wound around the holidays with patterns in mind, but I haven't knit them yet. But I know for sure I want to finish the sweater and I want to start my DVD socks and I want to start the scarfy thing with either pom-poms or tassels and I'll probably, I'll probably knit the scarf and then see if I have enough for pom-poms and if I don't, I'll make tassels. So, got that all straightened out. And this will be nice because it'll be straight stockinette, no pearls or anything. And I'll start them on lar uh, large needles. I'll start the magic loop since I'm going to do like a pointy toe end. And then I'll switch them to my 9 inch circulars. And I already have the 9 inch circulars with the yarn. I haven't wound the yarn yet because I was afraid I would start it and not finish my sweater. Um, and then I have to knit my DVD socks. I'm like crazy knitter, y'all. All I want to do is knit. And I've been really frustrated lately because I haven't had as much time. And this sweater is taking me longer to finish than um, a pair of socks or something. And I got a Simply Serving beautiful stitch marker, Progress Keeper. When I got into this inches and inches of stockinette, it was really driving me crazy because I felt like it looked like nothing was happening. Let me hold that closer so maybe you can see it. Uh, but this really, it came and I put it on the same day it came because I really, really needed it. Lindsay does a beautiful job at Simply Serving. And I will say I've had other popular uh, progress keepers by other makers. Well, one other maker. And I don't, I'm not saying anything bad, but my favorite stitch marker that I got. One of my favorites. They're all pretty much my favorites. My, I had a chocolate frog. And I don't know what happened to it. It was on a pair of socks in a bag that I carried with me, but I don't remember sitting on it. I don't remember dropping it, but both of my chocolate frog legs broke off. I found them just broken and I, I, I just got rid of it. I couldn't bear the thought of gluing them and then them not staying. I didn't know if I should use super glue or something else. I was just heartbroken and they were kind of a limited time offering thing. And I probably could have contacted the maker, but I didn't want to. I just, I have plenty of progress keepers and I bought a charm when I was at Harry, Harry Potter Studios, Warner Brothers Studios in England that has a chocolate frog on it that I was going to make a stitch marker out of anyway, or progress keeper and this little teacup. I never get the teacups. I never make the updates with the teacups, but I got a teacup. It's so cute. It's the St. Patty's, but it's green tea. I like green tea. I really need a bubble tea stitch marker now, though. I've been really drinking bubble tea and loving it lately. But anyway, I also got this beautiful... Okay, so there may have been an abrupt um, stoppage, rough cut there, sorry. My spouse called. He and uh, the boy are on their way here, so I'm very excited. But I also got from the Scrappy Thread... She had posted whip cozies and I wanted to get more than one because I love using these and invariably the one I want or the one I've been using gets left in a bag that has something in it and I don't have one in my current bag. But this one, oh my gosh, when I made the update, there were two and I put this one in my cart and the other one disappeared. So I bought this one really quickly. I think it was actually in other people's carts as well. Look, there's birds. I could not have picked a better one. These are my colors. I love purple, I love blue, I love green, I love pink. And this mustard color with these blue birds. I mean, I would love something huge with that fabric. Love it, it's so perfect for me. So I got this, this is what I've been using with my sweater. And, uh, oh, my sweater is living in my Casey Pockets to Go bag with all of the Doctor Who's, except for the Lady Doctor Who, because this one was made when Capaldi was Doctor Who. So it's everybody up to Capaldi. How exciting is that? And of course, Tom Baker, my favorite with his scarf. Well, I mean, David Tennant, but Classic Who's, Tom Baker is definitely my fave. He's really the only one I remember watching with my dad. So, 
Jelly Baby. Anyway, um, I think that's it. I don't want to get interrupted again. I love Melissa Woods, formerly the Spicy Homemaker's new podcast channel. I got to watch her a bit earlier. Does anyone have any interest in doing an Andy Satterlong, Satterland uh, along with me? Or we can just have a vest along? I don't know that anybody's having a vest along. Um, and I may or may not do this cardigan for the Mr. Rogers sweater cowl that the Spicy Homemaker is having. I really would like to do a button-up vest for my hubby because... Um, Chandler Bing and sweater vests. I really want to make my hubby some sweater vests. He did not watch Friends, but I did, and I just think they're cute. You can get these, um, patterns digitally on Ravelry if you're interested, but I'll show you the other ones. There's a big, beautiful cowl. There's a hat and mitt set. And then this sweater is really pretty. But I don't know if I would like it with the double-breasted look of buttons like I don't I don't think it would look good on me but you let me know I need to look and see if any larger ladies have done this sweater and by the way I don't care what size you are if you knit a sweater please 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 pretty please with sugar on top put a photo of yourself in your sweater on Ravelry you are beautiful and wonderful and sweaters are a lot of work that you should be proud of and you should be proud to show off your sweater on yourself. So, I'm going to do it. I'm going to post a photo of myself in it. And I love you guys. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, show notes, as usual, can be found in the Scrap Bear Knits podcast group on Ravelry. I will put a link under here to that. And, uh... Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry that I look so terrible, but thanks for spending time with me today. Have a good one. Knit happy, y'all.